Okay, this is yet another video about 3D, 3D, or uh, WebGL rendering mode in P5.js. This is where I last left off, uh, essentially in the, la in the previous video, where I spent most of my time simply looking at 3D geometry. So what does it mean to suddenly use translate with a Z axis? What does it mean to rotate with an X axis, a Y axis, or a Z axis? And what kinds of 3D primitives are there? Cone, <laughs> box, torus, all of these things. So, but what I want to explore in this video um, is material and lights. What are these things? So material describes the sort of skin of the 3D object. How does that skin behave when it receives, when, it, when, when light shines on it? Right? In a 2D world, there's no such thing as lights. We are just setting colors precisely. We're saying, draw this rectangle with this color. But in the 3D renderer, we have the option of saying, hey, draw this shape with this material and then shine this light on it. And depending on what material we use, depending on what light we use and where we place that light, we can create different looks and feels. We've relinquished a lot of control to the sort of pixel level determination of what we're drawing, but we're now gaining this illusion of shadowing and lights and three-dimensional perspective. So let's go take a look at that. Now, first of all, there is actu are actually already a material present in this particular example. I would love to make a list of those things and write them on the board, but I'm actually just going to go uh, here. I'll actually show you. Um, this is a, a quick uh, cheat sheet that uh, Coding Train viewer Simon made. Um, so I'm going to go under material here. So you can see these are some different kinds of material that we're going to explore. And at some point, I want to get into texture and maybe shaders as well. So, but um, uh, I'm going to go back to this getting started tutorial. And you can see um, at one point, uh, actually, or in a lot of 3D environments, there's something called a basic material. A basic material is a material that fills the shapes uh, surface with color and does and that which does not respond to light and that's actually what Phil is doing. So in this um, in this particular example, this fill function is applying a basic material. And if I were to change, if I were to add a little bit of red to that, we would see um, we would see suddenly ah it's a little bit. I better add some more red. That that barely made a change. There we go. We can see that I'm altering the color of this beautiful spinning torus. Okay. So step one. Now, what if we wanted to add some lights to this scene? So the first kind of light, oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's go with this. The first kind of light that we could add, I don't know why I'm doing lights first. I should probably just keep talking about materials. So let's first experiment with materials. So I'm actually gonna take out the fill and I'm going to add something called a normal material. Normal, norm, normal material. And let's see what happens. Look what I have now. I have this beautiful rainbow colored torus. In fact, what the normal material does is assigns to every vertex, which has an X, Y, Z position, it assigns a color. The X position of the vertex relative to the object center uh, is a, gives it its red value. Its Y position, its green value, and its Z position, its blue value. And this is actually really, this normal material is just for the purpose of debugging. So if you haven't figured out what colors you want things to be, or what textures, you just want to see your 3D shapes and be able to see them as 3D, just adding a normal material is useful. Talking about the normal material is a nice excuse for us to just remind ourselves that this shape, right, isn't actually a smooth shape. If I turn the stroke back on and turn the fill back on, whoops, oh, it says no stroke there. We can see this is actually just a tiled collection of polygons. And what the normal is, the normal vector for any given polygon, like say this triangle here, is a vector that points outward from the polygon. Is, is perpendicular to the plane. And that vector, that normal vector, is associated with how the light reflects off of that plane. So normal material is using the normal vector to assign an RGB value. Um, okay, but really, really in this case, it's just something that you would use for debugging or as kind of like a default material. And, or if you just like rainbows and you want everything to be rainbow colored, hey, why not use the normal material? So let's go back here. Okay, so now we're back. Aha, okay. So now, let's start thinking about some actual materials that we might want to use. For example, an ambient material. 
So I'm going to call this an ambient material. Whoops. I'm going to get rid of the fill. And I'm gonna, I shouldn't have had the fill there. The, on normal, you can only have one material. So fill, you can think of as basic material. So normal material just overwrote that. I'm going to say ambient material. And I'm going to say 0, 0, 255. Let's see what's going on now. Now look at this. Why is that not blue? I said ambient material, but it's not blue. Why? An ambient material, unlike a basic material or fill, which just gives the shape that color no matter what the lights are. An ambient material is a material that reflects light. So only if there is light of a particular color will it reflect that. So for example, I could add some ambient light. And, and, and um, I'm going to put the, the order doesn't matter. I mean, the order, order does matter, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to say ambient light. And I'm going to say, I'm going to give a red light. And you might ask the question now, ah, so if I have an ambient material of blue and a ambient light of red, shouldn't I see purple? I still only see black. And because the material can only reflect the color blue and I'm only shining the color red on it. So this is something you really have to think about. You could try to imagine like a reflective surface that only reflects one kind of color and you have the flashlight of a certain color. That's the kind of thing you need to be thinking about. So what I might do here is just make the ambient color white, the ambient light white, and you can see now I've got the blue and I forgot to say no stroke. So we can see now this looks just like the fill. So an ambient material of blue with a blue light, it looks exactly the same. Now here's something interesting though. What if I were to, there's a couple things. One is I could actually just make the material white and then shine a blue light on it. Exactly the same result. So that's important to realize. That's exactly the same result. Obviously, it's going to be different if there's lots of shapes with different material colors. But what I want to point out here, which I think is important, is let me just change this torus for a second to a sphere. A beautiful, round, three-dimensional sphere. Whoa! Way too big. Uh, 100. That looks to me just like an ellipse. If you look closely, you can kind of see there's some kind of spinning or rotating here. But an ambient light, the thing to realize about ambient light is an ambient light is a light that shines from everywhere in all directions. So it's kind of like a magical light. It's not coming from a particular source. It's not shining in a particular direction. And so in this case, I don't really see the three-dimensional quality of this sphere because there's no shadowing. So in this case, what I want to look at is what if I use something called a point light? So we're going to look at ambient light, point light, and uh, directional light. A point light is a light that I could place, think of a light bulb that I can place into the scene. It shines in all directions from a particular location. So what if I wanted to put a point light over here? Let's do that. So I'm going to say point light. And I still give it the color, 00255 blue, but now it's not ambient. It needs to give it a location. So I'm going to say 0, negative 200, 0. So I want it just to be a point light that's positioned over here at the edge, right by where my finger is, right there. OK, here we go. Ready? Whoa! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I put it at the Y location. So it actually worked. I put it above. I just got the wrong spot. So it's important to look at the documentation. If we look at Simon's uh, cheat sheet here, point light RGB, the, uh, RGB X, Y, Z. So the X position is this one. And I'm going to make that 200. Oh, negative 200. I wanted to put it over there. Oops. And go back to my sketch. And there we go. We can see it's to the left. I could actually give it you know, I could say mouse x minus 200 or mouse y mi minus 200. And now you can see I have this point light that I can move around. And I could put two point lights in the scene and say add uh, one point light, negative 200 comma 0, and another point light at 0, 200 comma 0, and give, make that one red. And we could see. Uh, Whoops, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is I'm putting them in different locations. But you can see now I have a point light shining from over here that's red and a point light shining from over here that's blue. So point lights are things you can position, move, and give them different colors. Now, let's think about material for a second. So this is ambient material. Ambient material is a material that reflects ambient, uh, it reflects light. 
There is another kind of material that also reflects light, but reflects it in a slightly different way if you want a different look, and that's called specular material. And specular material is a material that's shinier, more metallic, uh, and kind of, you know, a billiard ball or water or metal or something, you can get a slightly different look. So let's just look at that. I'm going to say a specular material, and I'm going to leave the color white, meaning the material is white, so it's just reflecting whatever light is there. And we can see, look at this, you can kind of see this like shiny quality to this. So I might want to do some more experimentation. I'll leave it to you to experiment with different materials and different colored lights and different shapes. Okay, so I'm going to go back to ambient material and point light. Now, I want to look at the last, I think the last thing we've got to look at here is directional light. So what is a directional light? Directional light is an interesting thing. It's a light that has a direction, but no position, meaning it's kind of infinitely far away. So if you can imagine, I'm in the 3D scene right here, and I'm going to say, the sun is over there, right? The sun is not infinitely far away, but it's so far that you can kind of imagine it. So I'm pointing in the direction of where the light's coming from. So this is different than what you might think of as a spotlight or a uh, flashlight, which would be like the combination of a point light and a directional light, a light at a certain point that points in a certain direction. That, as far as I know, is not implemented yet in P5 WebGL renderer, but you can have a point light and or, or a directional light. So let's make a directional light happen. So instead of having a blue and uh, what's yellow, red and green, right? Let's try to make the sun. Instead of having a uh, blue, a blue point light, I'm going to change this to directional light. And now this vector, this vector over here, describes, um, describes the direction of the light. So if I want to have the light coming from over there, like coming from the right, um, I want to say point, the vector points 1 in the x direction. So I'm going to say 1, 0, 0. And let's go refresh this. And you can see there's the yellow light coming from the right, this direction, okay? And if I were to say a negative one there, it's coming from the other side. If I were to say it's coming from the front, like where, it, as if your eyes are the light, you can see that. My eyes are shining light directly into the scene. So you can see how powerful this directional light can be. So here's the thing. One thing we could do now is we could have a directional light point into the scene based on the mouse. So for example, I could make a variable that is the uh, mouse x minus the center of the window and mouse y minus the center of the window. Now something weird is going to happen here. And I should probably put this back to the torus because I think it's going to be easier to see with the torus. Uh, and so um, I'm going to say uh, and now I want the directional light to be dx and dy. Let's see what happens. Now look at this. I'm getting this kind of glitchy effect. The reason this is happening is um, the vector is, so ideally if you want the effect that I want at least here, the vector, that thing that's pointing, needs to be of length 1. And I didn't have to worry about that when I said 1 comma 0 0 or 0 1 comma 0 because it was by definition length 1. because they It's not that it adds up to 1 but it's like the length, its actual length is 1. So in this case, the vector is like, you know, if I could kind of get the mouse really close to the center and you could sort of see how I can get some of that shading back, but the light gets stronger. So this is something you might be able to use to your advantage, but ultimately I want to normalize the length of that vector. And there's a nice way that I can do that, because what I could do is I could say let v, I can make a vector object, make a vector which has an x component, a y component and a z component, which I'm leaving at zero for right now, and I could just pass that vector in as the last argument. So the directional light has a color and a vector. Same result here, but now I could say v.normalize. And what the normalize function does is shrinks the vector to length one, and you can see now as I move the mouse around, I'm changing the direction that the light is shining. And you know, maybe I could do something like you know, I could do something like divide it by 100. And so you can see I can make the light kind of brighter 
based on like how far away the mouse is. So I just want to be within a pretty reasonable range. Once I get so, such a high range, it's very, very glitchy. So the strength of that light, it appears, also is tied to the, to the length of that vector. Okay, so let's take a look here. I think we've talked about normal material. Normal material, of, so basic material, by the way, is fill. And just so you notice here, if I go back, this is actually important to say, if I go back and say fill, 0, 0, 255, comment out the ambient material, and I still have the lights and everything, you can see that light is not affecting this. So an object that doesn't interact with any of the lights in the scene, you can use fill. It's pretty rare that you would probably want that to happen, but just to note, if you're wondering like, oh, why is nothing responding to my light if you're using fill? So fill, like a basic material. Ambient material is a material that reflects light. Specular material is a material that reflects light I'll be in a slightly different, shinier, perhaps, way. And then the three kind of lights are ambient light, a just general wash of light from everywhere in every direction, point light, which is a light where you give a position, whoops, a position and a color. So it emanates in all directions, but from one position. And uh, uh, directional light is a light that's coming from a given direction, essentially infinitely far away. Maybe like depending on the length of the vector, it's closer and closer or brighter and brighter. A couple other things that were pointed out by the chat before I go. If I were to add an ambient light here, and let me make that ambient light blue, let's just see what happens. So you can see, interestingly enough, the ambient light and the uh, directional light are interacting with each other. And everything is blue everywhere, but the red and green that's coming in through the directional light mix with that blue and end up making white light. Now, of course, if this color, if this were to be just red, the directional light, you can see that directional light is now mixing with the ambient light and making pink. So this I really want to leave to you as an exercise, mixing point lights, directional lights, ambient lights, all these things you've learned about, like oscillating color, lerping color, transition, all of that stuff that you do in any kind of 2D, you can do with the lights as well. So you can make all sorts of beautiful, crazy, psychedelic, colorful, three-dimensional scenes by mixing lots of different shapes and lots of different lights. Okay, so share with me what you make just with materials and lights. See if anybody can make something that demonstrates the difference between specular material and ambient material a bit better than I did in this uh, video. I'd love to see that. Please share it with me. And I'll see you in the next video where, if I haven't said this already, I come back and talk about texture and then in a follow-up also about camera perspective. Okay, thanks for watching. See you soon.